What's going on, everybody? Happy Monday, happy Monday. So, I wanted to do something this year a little bit different, and it's going to be some of my predictions on how the card industry is going to do over the course of this year. Some people call it, you know, uh, card market predictions or bold predictions, whatever it may be across the board. But as we've seen throughout the last two years, people in 2020 were able to make predictions pretty good uh, because of with the spike and everything. Even with 2021, their predictions were close for the first few months of the year, and then they were way, way, way off. But I wanted to do this to see where myself and what I see the industry doing over the course of the year, and then to see what happens at the end. And some of the stuff, Hey, it may be way, way out there. No joke, because I wrote down here on some notes. But also, I'd like to see what everybody else thinks overall. What do you guys see happening in the industry over the next year as well, too? And, I mean, you can look at it as with and without COVID, too, if you want. All right. Let me grab my pen over here so I can scratch stuff off. All right. First thing I see happening is we know... Tops and Panini already lost licenses across the board. I think we're going to see more product being pushed out, as in volume-wise of each product, along with even more parallels or versions of the base card this year, whether it's refractors or whatever it may be. Um, I, I just see it coming across the board to where... Both Tops and Panini do this big push, make as much money out of it as they can, and I think it's going to start killing the market somewhat on those numbered cards. And I think a lot of people are going to go back to the original colors and wanting them, not shimmers and pulsars and all this other stuff that was out there. I understand X-Fractors, they've been around for a very, very long time. But I think people are going to stick with the true colors from back in the day that were purple, blue, green, gold, orange, red. And that's it. No shimmers, waves, and all that other stuff. But I think if people are going to want to buy to hold or looking to buy, those are going to be what's going to end up happening by the end of the year. Along with, like I said, mass production of base cards across the board. Which brings me into topic number two, is that this I already said last year, but I think we're going to even see a bigger decline in the ultra-modern ultra graded card value. And when you look at that as a whole, it is going to be just way down because you're going to start seeing when I start heck we might even have to start a 20,000 club member this year PSA is doing something like 200 225,000 cards a day across all sports and that includes tickets and packs and stuff like that which really aren't that big of a percentage of that weekly uh, total but as that comes back you start noticing prices will decrease this is why I was talking last year that I'm only sticking with low-numbered cards and stuff like that and autographs. But the caveat that if you look, even uh, NT, Dynasty, and certain other high-value uh, boxes, when they come out, are even producing more and more. Your autographs aren't just of your stars and great retired players now. It's anybody that's ever played the game. So, back to the original point here. Ultra-modern graded um, value will decline even more than what we've already seen. Some people think it's settled, and I really don't. I don't think we're going to see it settled until the first part of the backlog is eliminated. As you can see, though... We'll hit PSA here very shortly. All right. Next prediction. We had all these new grading companies open across the board. I think we will continue seeing them disappearing. 
because they hold no value out there in the market unless you're just buying it for your own collection to have something slabbed and put on a wall because it's your PC. I, I think we see more of them disappear. And I'm not talking about SGC or HGA and stuff like that. But the other ones that came out that already have started trickling away will continue seeing that trickle effect down the road here to where they're losing money because PSA's opening back up off their backlog. And I'll hit Beckett and stuff like that there, too, in SGC as we go through these here. But I think we start seeing those trickle away, which, in return, nobody's going to want those slabs. They're going to be in Fairfield boxes next. All right, let's see here. Let's go right into PSA. So as you see here on the screen... They talk about their five New Year's resolutions. Eliminate the backlog, pull back the curtain, improve quality, image every card, expand their footprint. If they could do all that, I'll give them kudos. This is what I see happening. PSA will start a footprint. They will not execute of having another location to where cards will be submitted. And I think they're going to divide it up if you're in... These states you have to send here. If you're in these states, you have to send there. I can see that being part of their footprint that they're in the works of. Like an East Coast, West Coast type deal. I I think that'll be something towards the end of the year that they'll announce. That they're working as their goal for 2023. Because that's a lot of moving pieces. You have to find senior graders that are willing to move. And then they have to move, buy houses, relocate family, you know, the big whole scoop onto it. Um, I do think the backlog is going to be eliminated right before the national this year. And what I see them doing is when they open it back up, that the floodgates, when they open, are not going to be in a controlled measure as what I think they should be in. And they backlog themselves somehow, some way. It's either going to be by people flooding the value system, the membership only um, little perks that you get for submissions, or the group submitters. Unless they control it, which I think they're going to try, but I think they end up getting themselves in a backlog by the end of the year. <clears throat> I think we see prices adjusted two times during the year. I can't really say if they're going to be up or down in price. I, I want to hopefully say they go down different uh, levels, but I see that happening at least twice this year. Uh, improved quality image, every card. I'm not even going to get into that. That's that's their thing. So PSA, kudos for them for having something out there, but what I see is they do eliminate the backlog. They start looking to branch to do a second location to handle even more volume, but in that process, by the end of the year, they start getting backlogged in the value economy area. Maybe regular. We'll see, but that's my bold prediction, whatever you want to call it, by the end of the year. All right, moving on. Fearless Beckett. We haven't talked about Beckett because for like two years, they have just pretty much shot themselves in the uh, foot there. I, I'm going to just put this on Beckett. I don't see them being caught up by the end of the year. No way, no how. Maybe they release a new level because PSA is starting to do it. But until they start doing something with their footprint and everything... I say Beckett does not catch up this year, and the prices to get something great are still crazy stupid through Beckett. SGC, which I didn't pull up, I think they'll fluctuate between a little bit of a backlog to a backlog, depending on the other two bigger companies. And let's just knock out Beckett, depending on what PSA does, and if they get through their backlog, and if they get backlogged again. So... That, that's with the grading companies themselves. All right. Next thing that I see happening is sports card shows take over big time. Like back in the 
90s and 2000s to where there's multiple shows starting to pop up here and there. Whether it's your local one, it has 20 tables, 40 tables, or a big show with 200 tables. I, I'm starting to see that that's going to be this big thing this year is going to be card shows. People are going to want to try to take out and make the national, the number two event of the year, basically. Whether it's Dallas, Tampa, whatever it may be. When you hear guys talk about running their shows, they want to be at that level. And that's a lot of planning. I'm not going to lie to do all that stuff. You have to have a big crew and all that. But I see card shows becoming more plentiful throughout 2022 unless we all get locked down from COVID during the year. That's my only caveat to that. But I think that's going to be the big thing. And the reason being, which will go into my next point, is that marketplaces are going to start making 1099s out to people. People are already sweating them. Oh my gosh, I'm going to get a 1099 from eBay, PayPal, and all these other marketplaces. Why? They just go to a card show. Maybe they have a license, maybe they don't. But they can just get cash and, you know, they're going to consider it a wash and they're going to, you know, basically hide the money that they made from that show. And that's the other reason why I see this happening is those in-person sales to where it's nothing being tracked. Maybe the guy bought it's tracking it, but the guy that's selling it probably won't be. Um, but that goes into my next thing: the different types of marketplaces and like I'm going to call them apps. I see more of those coming out because people are starting to get these good ideas, and it's like, hey, if I get this good idea and get so and so people to back me onto it, I'm going to make a ton of money, and it'll be an, an app or something that's out for a year, two years, maybe three. And they'll make their money, and then they'll sell it off to a bigger company, and and then it will you know be at oh it's part of this membership with Beckett or SGC or whatever it may be, but I see that happening this year too, because I've already noticed in the past two years people's wills spinning and coming up with great ideas and pushing them forward, but I think we'll see more marketplaces and apps opening up across the board. Through 2022. And like I said, most of that's just due to people not wanting them 1099s and ePay and eBay fees and stuff like that, too. Um, they're going to try to find somewhere that, even though it might be a marketplace, somehow to where that marketplace pushes the tax bracket back on them, which I don't think you can now. I have to go back through a couple seminars, but I'm pretty sure any marketplace, you have to do it. All right. Where's my Nexo scratcher? I talk about sports card shows. All right. The last two things I have. I think wax prices will decrease ultra modern. I think when they first come out, there now this is an exception of like Definitive and NT and stuff like that. That super high end always was super high end. That stuff will always be pricey afterwards. What I'm talking about is like Tops, um, Top Series One, Tops Update, Prism, Select, and all that stuff. I think it'll come out hot and heavy at first with some crazy prices, but I see it getting kicked back some money onto it because people are not going to want to pay those crazy prices after a while because you're not going to be able to grade your box out to get any money back. Unless you're one of the very first people, you luck out, sell it, and then you have to hopefully hope that wherever your platform you sell it on doesn't allow uh, chargebacks. But I think the box prices will take a little bit of a step back to where, and I'm going to use this for an example, say, I don't know what, Series 1 Jumbo last year, say it came out $200 a box, it may come out $175 this year. I'm just using that for an example because I think that's how we're going to look at it. It'll be a small decrease. And then once they have all this product they've been producing so much of and it's sitting on shelves, 
it'll slowly trickle back a little bit more in price. All right, last one. Sorry, guys, I had to wet the throat down because I thought I was going to have one of my coffin pieces still from being a little bit of uh, recovery of sickness. Last point one, I think, is people become very smarter this year on prices, scams, and just cards in general. Whether it's knowing how to comp their cards, whether they're knowing to look what's right and wrong in breaks and trim cards, fake autographs, whatever it may be. Also, along with listening to what people have to say. But like, oh my goodness, John Morant's the greatest thing right now. Go buy John Morant's. They know that's a bad thing to do because uh, somebody's hyping it because guess what? They've already bought into it. Or they're trying to sell right there. But I think overall, the community of collectors out there will become a lot smarter this year with buying, selling, and trading across the board. All right, everybody. Appreciate y'all listening to the video. Let me know what you guys think offhand. Um, I know some of my predictions are way, way out there in a way. Um I want to do mostly this video so I can come back at the end of this year, see what I said, what came true, what came false. All right, guys. You guys have a good rest of the week, and I'll catch you all next video.